happening everybody i'm out here i'm at the beach today and i've got all my tackle with me and today i want to talk to y'all about the most popular saltwater fishing rigs lures baits but i want to talk specifically about those rigs the different rigs and their applications so we do a lot of tutorials about like you know the different rigs and lures and we do individual tutorials on popping corks and hard baits and soft baits and live bait rigs and all that other stuff so today i want to kind of like we're going to talk about each of those rigs but we're going to talk a little bit more just about like the application of the rig so if you guys are brand new to saltwater fishing this is a perfect video for you if you've been saltwater fishing your entire life and you guys probably know all of these rigs then this video will still help you all because i'm actually going to talk about different like variations of these rigs some pro tips and even just like some things some common mistakes that people make and just to like maximize your fish catching potential on each of the popular rigs so let's say that you guys are just here at the beach and you want to just catch fish or you want to catch yourself some bait uh, you're on the pier you're right here on the beach like where I'm at or you're on your boat and you just want to catch some fish that right here that's gonna be your bottom rig so this is your typical bottom rig so these bottom rigs I really like to use blood worms and or just any like fresh live bait like cut bait too but one of the more like common mistakes that I see people making fishing these bottom rigs is they use hooks that are too big so these are the hooks that I like to use they're just the smaller hooks right here so this is like the most basic saltwater rig and you just want to just see action you just want to catch fish you really don't care what it is these bottom rigs they'll get it done um, yeah so talking about hook size which is really important for these bottom rigs a lot of people they'll go and they'll get like hooks that are this big this is a two eye hook so this is actually like a size four hook so smaller hooks I'm bit smaller hooks are better because you're just going to increase your chances of hookups and a lot of people they just use hooks that are too big i like these style of weights just like this you can also use pyramid sinkers i'm also showing you guys some different styles of weights that y'all can use for a bottom rig anything from a one ounce two ounce and then if it's really ripping current then i'll do a three ounce but so smaller weights smaller hooks for those bottom rigs that's going to get the job done all right it, it's pouring down rain right there all right i'm going to continue this tutorial in my garage because i'm getting rained on right now Whew. all right we're back uh the storm just passed and that was that was crazy had to change my clothes and everything that was like a crazy torrential downpour that i got called in luckily my camera made it but okay where were we so for popping corks so i see people like throwing a popping cork and fishing it over top of water that's just too deep those a lot of those fish are going to be kind of near the bottom right up on the structure the pilings and a lot of the changes in the, in the topography that we have so a popping cork is great remember it's amazing when you're like fishing over oyster beds grass flats um, and you're just fishing in i would say like anything less than seven feet of water unless the fish are up on top then you can throw a popping cork um, an exception to that rule like in the noose river uh, we're fishing for big drum and we're fishing in like 30 feet of water but those fish they're up on top because they're around all the bait balls and everything so that's kind of the exception to the rule but i just really wanted to point that out i actually do get kind of picky with the type of popping cork that i use i like to use the popping cork that's most appropriate for the scenario that I'm fishing. So this concave cork, it works great in all areas. It works great in Louisiana. These things are amazing in Louisiana and in the marsh there with some of that more like stained water. So they're going after some of those mullet and you know the bait that's making a little, little bit more disturbance. So that's where this concave and a little bit larger cork is going to work great for that. This is like a cigar, smaller type of a popping cork. I like to use this one when I'm fishing down in Florida, South Florida, clear water, and you're fishing in and around the shrimp. Fishing Savannah, Georgia, some little bit more muddier stained water, or if I was fishing in Louisiana, then I would use something like this. So this is the next rig that we're gonna talk about, and this is a fish finder rig, okay? So what this is, we've got egg weight sinker slides up and down our main line then we have this two-way swivel 
right here below that stops it some people put a bead right here it's whatever you want I just use the egg weight sinker this is a two ounce egg weight sinker so when I'm fishing like in and around docks I'm gonna be using a small 3 8 ounce egg weight sinker so again this is how it works though you've got your egg weight sinker it slides up and down your main line two-way swivel I've got about two and a half feet or so of leader line and then I've got my hook so this rig is super effective because you can pretty much use any bait and you can use it in any application kind of some things i like to talk about with the fish finder rig is well what i have set up i think this weight's too heavy this is a two ounce weight you want just enough weight to where your bait is staying in place so some areas in florida and just up and down the east coast i don't know why but i'm just thinking of some fishing experiences that i've had snook fishing in and around bridges in florida um and you know it's you, you'll just get a lot of current so depending on what the current's doing you just adjust your weight to that but up here say like fishing in and around docks where most of us are fishing and you know you're fishing from a dock or you're fishing from a kayak or whatever that's all you need just something like this it's going to hold your bait into position and it's just going to not get all hung up on the rocks and everything it's going to keep it on the bottom but with a smaller weight you're going to also feel that bite a little bit better and detect that bite and the same common mistake just in general is people are using hooks that are like too big so this hook right here uh, this hook is great you know if you're fishing for redfish but let's say you're fishing for sheep's head this hook's way too big um, unless you're targeting like the giant giant sheep's head that we have up here on the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel so these right here oh my gosh there we go wow this autofocus is not really working out today but these are the hooks right here that i like to use for the fish finder rig these are four aught hooks and they're like octopus inline circle hooks. These work great for redfish. When you're flounder fishing, you know, you typically use like those kale hooks. I don't have any, but kale hooks work great. Um, and yeah, but these work great. Kind of like a do everything size hook. All right, so let's move on to some artificials and let's start kind of basic with that. So this right here is just the most basic, uh, just, you know, your jig quarter ounce jig this right here if i had an artificial bait that i had to use if i was stranded on an island this is what it would be quarter ounce jig head a common mistake that people make especially when they're fishing a jig and artificials is they apply too much action to the lure you have to make it the fish's idea for them to you can't force a fish to eat your lure so a lot of people especially especially when I have people out flounder fishing, they're applying too much action to it. Honestly, for flounder fishing, if you just like drifted your boat and left your rod in the rod holder, and that's what we call dead sticking, and your bait is literally just moving along at on the bottom at the pace of the boat drift, you're gonna catch flounder that way. So some people, when they're flounder fishing, they're like jigging it too hard, and the uh, jigs like way up here and the flounder are down here. So honestly, like this is kind of what I use, inshore saltwater procure. People ask me all the time, like, should I use blue crab or mullet or shrimp procure? Do you really think that fish are only gonna eat it if it's shrimp or blue crab or if it's a mullet? Like who the heck cares? Sometimes I'll go in the tackle shop and whatever procure they have is just what I'll buy or whatever is like, just I'm in a hurry I'm like okay just take that pro cure so any scent works uh, it's not like a fish is gonna be like I'm not eating that because it's not shrimp pro cure okay so next is gonna be mirror lures these mirror lures are amazing if you guys have never fished a mirror lure for saltwater fishing you're definitely missing out or just hard plastics in general I mean soft plastics I absolutely love the benefit of soft plastics is that you can work your soft plastic through pretty much whichever part of the water column that you want. So you can bounce the soft plastic, or you can swim it and jig it up on top. You know, soft plastics, you can apply different types of action too. These mirror lures 
these work amazing when you fish for really all of our inshore species. It's the profile. To me, like in saltwater fishing, color is important. Profile, most important. Twitch, twitch, pause. And that's the action that it's gonna give, is it's like twitch, twitch, and then it just paused. And that's the way that this lure works, is it like, when it goes through the water, it's got like this motion, it's like a flutter to it. The common mistake that I make, that I see people using with these, is they work them too fast. Cause they're going like this, twitch, 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 twitch. And sometimes, not only in the winter, especially in the winter, you know, it's a slow, slow, slow. It's like twitch, twitch, pause. And some of these, they're suspending, or you can get the slow sinking ones, and it's just like this. And those trout, they'll literally like stare at it. And it's just slowly sinking. And then the trout are like, how can I not pass this up? And they'll just destroy it. Um, when you're working this lure, you also wanna kinda, sometimes if it's like deeper, point your rod tip down. And that's what's going to twitch, twitch, pause. You point, is, let's say you're fishing over like a really shallow flat, Texas, wherever. Point your rod tip, you can twitch it up. And that's gonna give it this type of action. Like right? twitch, twitch sing twitch twitch sing just like that so these lures right here amazing definitely have to add these to your repertoire so let's talk about the next thing and that's going to be our metals and gotcha plugs so these gotcha plugs these are one of the most popular saltwater lures and these are great when you're fishing in the ocean these are great when you're fishing off of a pier around jetties typically for spanish mackerel um, bluefish um, we've even caught cobia off of these. My buddy, uh, he caught a bull red drum off of a gotcha plug from his kayak. Um, these will catch the Spanish mackerel and the bluefish is what these are most popular for. Um, you will catch redfish, you'll catch trout. Actually, a lot of people catch speckled trout in the surf off of these. So these, the application is great for ocean fishing for the pier. And with a gotcha plug, the number one thing that I see as a mistake is people don't work these fast enough. A gotcha plug, when you're targeting like Spanish mackerel or bluefish, those are like really fast swimming fish. They have that fork tail and like a Spanish mackerel is like a semi-pelagic fish. I mean, they're fish, they're, they are very, very fast swimmers. You cannot reel fast enough to, you know, for a Spanish mackerel to not be able to catch up for this lure. Um, so that's kind of the number one mistake that I see people using, that I see people doing, is they don't work this lure fast enough. And um, the other thing is you're, some people are also using, let me point this out. So this is, um, this is, this right here is wire leader. And when you're fishing for Spanish mackerel, uh, I would not use wire leader. Um, you kind of have to pay to play with Spanish mackerel and you also have to like just keep retying because each time that you catch a Spanish they have their teeth and they're going to fray your line. So that's where you can actually leave, if you, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but I have like a little bit more of like a tag end on this one. And that, uh, so I, I like to leave a little bit more of a tag end for these ones and I'm using at least 20 pound test so pretty much 20 to 25 pound test sometimes 30 uh, so a lot, a lot of my friends use 30 pound test fluorocarbon for sure it's a little bit more clear um, so that's those Spanish mackerel and bluefish but especially Spanish mackerel are going to be a little bit more sight oriented and if you're using wire you might catch one Spanish for every 10 that your buddies are catching near you on the pier. So that's what I would use and make sure that you guys are working these fast. You can just reel it in as fast as you can if you want to. You can, I also like to do like a reel like this. So you're reeling and then you're giving that a nice jerk. So that's for gotcha plugs and even your sting silvers, which this is a sting silver right here. And this is a really popular Spanish mackerel bait and bluefish. And just if you're fishing off of the beach or pier or whatever, then the sting silver and the gotcha plug, you have to have these in your arsenal. Okay, some other things I wanna talk about is just like some other lures and some other rigs uh, for saltwater fishing, really popular rigs. 
uh, bottom sweeper jig. These are really popular when you're fishing for sheep's head, fishing off of a pier, redfish, anything that you're fishing with cut blue crab bottom sweeper. If you're in a kayak, you're fishing on a pier, and you're fishing kind of straight up and down, you can also cast these out, let them sit on the bottom. Bottom sweeper jigs, super popular. You guys check these out. Let's talk about bucktails for a second. All right, so bucktails are one of the most popular and just classic saltwater fishing lures of all time. Um, bucktails, they serve any application from, this is a two ounce bucktail flounder. Is This is great for fishing like offshore, near shore flounder wrecks. You could even use this for cobia. Uh, you could tip it with some Berkeley gulp, uh, Z-Man, anything like that. Um, so bucktails, absolutely great. You do need to have these in your tackle box. Uh, you can use these off of a pier. When you're pier fishing, let's say you're fishing with like a gotcha plug right here. Um, I typically go to a pier with gotcha plugs and then I'll have a bucktail tied on in case you see a cobia or a redfish, something you want to cast at. Um, and they're great for flounder and redfish and snook <laughs> and pretty much everything. Uh, striped bass too. So this is a half ounce bucktail right here. This one works great uh, for, you know, just again, like your, so this is a half ounce bucktail. This works great for flounder fishing pretty much everywhere. Uh, if you're fishing off the jetty, the beach, pier, boat, whatever. This is great. Half ounce bucktail is kind of like a do everything bucktail. Then you've got your lighter bucktails um, and your smaller ones. So this is like a super smaller bucktail and this one will actually get it done for Spanish mackerel as well. Uh, so bucktails will catch everything. Um, and that right there, people, hopefully that helps y'all out. Those are like the most popular saltwater fishing rigs, setups, and uh, have some footage you know throughout this video that kind of showed y'all like actually like catching fish and not just me like talking about it um but hopefully y'all enjoyed this video hopefully it helps y'all out in your saltwater fishing adventures that's why we love doing this youtube channel because it's for whether you're just getting into saltwater fishing or even saltwater fishing your entire life we kind of like to cover everything from whether you're a beginner or even saltwater fishing your entire life so you guys, please give us a comment below if you guys want to see any other tutorials or anything else that we can do just to help y'all stay stoked out there and catch some fish. That's all I got for today. I'll check y'all later. Peace out.